Hi, my name is Nobis Tamdilo, an animator in Africa, in Zimbabwe. I'm going to describe to you a workflow that I used between ZBrush and Cinema 4D to create the Maasai Warrior render that I created. Okay, so uh, this is the Maasai Warrior render. Now, Maasai warriors are an African tribesman uh, who are still very traditional even today. And they live somewhere in Kenya, uh, in the Kenyan uh, deserts and uh, 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 savannas. Um, and this was my inspiration um, for this design. Um, I created this in Cinema 4D R13 as well as ZBrush 4 R4. Okay, so first thing I normally do is just uh, change my Windows theme to something a bit more um, memory efficient. Um, then just get straight into it. Now I'm using the Dyna Mesh ball here. It's one of the primitives in ZBrush. You can put in a normal ball and just enable Dyna Mesh on it. And I'm using the Snake Hook uh, brush. Uh, which is just helping me block out the form, eye cavity, uh, nose, um, a bit of the mouth. Um, but the way, way strength really lies is like here when I pull out the neck, um, it, it's really aggressive in the way it pulls out. And I just uh, press control and drag on the side to invoke Dynamesh. Um, and that sort of uh, reforms the mesh and remeshes the entire uh, thing so that whenever there's any pulling uh, or stretched out polygons they get they get uh, remeshed equally or evenly so uh, once I've got my rough uh, shape out I go straight in with my clay build up tool or my clay build up brush and um, you know just start figuring out like what I'm doing here is a mouth cavity uh, not the cavity but the lips themselves um, and some of the chin you know just trying to figure this out and um, here's an uh, eye, uh, and I continuously keep uh, control dragging just to invoke the Dynamesh. It sort of smoothens out the, um, the mesh out a bit um, and remeshes uh, anything that may be getting stretched out. I'm just pulling the ears out here, just creating. Right now I'm not really worried about detail, but you know, I'm just trying to get as much form uh, as possible really early on. I'm just saving this out as a Z project. Um, okay, so... Uh, snake hook tool again just to help just shape stuff out uh, then uh, uh, here I'm using the Damien standard brush which sort of like really sharp pencil and if you press alt it uh, it uh, creates a more jutting out like line as opposed to one that's inset um, the normal brush as you can see here is like having a really thin sharp object and just cutting into clay uh, this really helps in just sort of marking your territory so that you know what forms you're looking for later on in the in the uh, in the in the sculpt I'm using my snake hook tool here just to adjust my proportions on my lips on my mouth uh, back to my clay brush uh, using the old just to dig in into the nose cavity there um, and then just start, you know, creating the actual nose and the nostrils themselves. Uh, the, when the polygons get stretched out there, I just control drag, remeshes that. Uh, you can also continuously just um, increase the resolution of your Dynamesh, like what I've done. I uh, did it a bit earlier. Uh, this is my clay brush again, just building up my cheek, my cheek um, geometry there. And my uh, jaw, my jawline there. Um, just kind of figuring the shape out on it to be a very angular character, a very sharp, defined, uh, defined features. So I want his jaw to really be, you know, really be a strong one. Uh, just alt with the clay brush, you know, and just start creating like the ear cavities there as well. Uh, I normally swap between the clay and the clay buildup. The buildup brush is a bit more aggressive. Um, the clay is a bit more respective to topology uh, or form that's already there. Um, so, you know, just whichever works, it's all about experimenting between the two brushes, in my opinion. So, um, here I'm just figuring out the bags under the eyes, because I want him to be an old uh, character, he's not young. So, um, uh, that's what I'm doing there. Uh, just pressing Alt, digging into there, just control, control drag to create, you know, to smooth that out. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put in a, um, a, a sub-tool um, and the sub-tool is just another object that you can put in your Z-Sculpt and uh, it's, in this case it's just a sphere just place it there because I just need uh, a reference shape for the eyeball so that I know um, uh, how, how to sculpt around that so I'm not just free-flowing that 
right so i go back to my main sculpt and then you know i start adjusting everything accordingly now that i have a, a sphere to to guide me and sort of get a better shape uh, for the eye out okay so yeah, just still working on some of the eye uh, uh, the eye uh, sculpt there just fleshing out a little shoulder a little chest um, not knowing uh, at the time I didn't know how far I was gonna go with it I was I was still just trying to make just a decent bust um, um, but then I liked it then that's when I dressed it up later um, but uh, this design will be used for probably a short film that I'm gonna be working on but a more fuller version this was just like a proof of concept more more like it so what i'm doing right now is using the damien standard brush and just uh going there and really cutting in on the lips and uh pressing alt to push out the rim of the the outer lips there uh just to give that nice definition and that nice shape so it's good to just sort of zoom out and just see how your how your um your project is looking like so what i've done right now is that i've disabled dynamesh because i think i've uh, i've achieved uh, close to the form i want subdivided it a few times and i'm now just going in and, and beginning detailing so i wanted to make this character like a really rough and weather beaten character he's not he's been through a lot of stuff you know like wars and stuff before he became a seer like uh, because the maasai warriors were well known in battle and well revered so um, this guy needs to have seen a lot of you know a lot of stuff um so i wanted to just have that with a lot of um you know a lot of weathering type look on his face so what i'm doing right now i was experimenting with the noise plugin which a friend suggested to sort of create that high uh frequency detail um for the skin um i'd never used it before this is why you see i keep clicking so many times because i hadn't seen uh, the little button there that says apply to mesh i i ended up checking it out it was a pain though <laughs> um so as, as I keep uh, figuring this out, you know, and, and I'm using the Damien standard brush just to sort of create like little incisions there, you know, for for the, for those like wrinkled type and really weathered type uh, geometry. You know, there for the forehead, you know, because he, he may frown a lot. Uh, that's uh, some crow's feet there. And then now I'm, I'm just getting into the eyes and really... Uh, like the eye bags and really pushing in uh, a few uh, adding in a lot of detail um, just you know above the uh, above the lips just under the nose uh, fleshing out more of the um, lips themselves of the texture and really you know trying to get that weather beaten look um, another thing I do um, just as a note is that I always remove symmetry when I'm adding this detail so that the character looks very uh, asymmetrical in in the way the details going I don't want uh, the detail uh, carried over to the other half uh, so I normally switch off symmetry when I'm working just you know adding a bit more in the eye sockets there a bit more of that weather weathered um, incision uh, get the feeling of like really thin skin you know like thin old skin uh, getting pulled over muscle That's some of the feeling I was going for there okay so what I'm doing now is that I'm using the um, curves guide brush because of a new feature in zbrush called q remesher um, so these guys are generally just going to guide the topology on on how to flow because i want to create a more animation friendly topology not that this model uh was for animation but i just wanted to create uh, like animation topology is very memory efficient um and i want when i uh go off to cinema 4d you know that i'm not slowing down and all the rest of this detail will be generated by a displacement map um, so once I, I, I draw a few guides about where this uh, goes, I just go under geometry, Q remesher, click the big Q remesher button and it'll generate like a low, low resolution uh, uh, model. You can actually tell it what kind of resolution you want. In this case, I think I left it at 15,000. 
that's pretty decent and uh the one thing you do before using uh the curie measure is you click uh freeze in your uh in your um geometry thing and and what it does is that it freezes all your your detail in the higher levels and then you 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 you, you press freeze when you're at your lower level and you curie mesh that and then after curie mesh is done with what it's, it's doing you then click unfreeze again and it'll apply and project all that high level detail back onto your model now in my case it did that but because the model was now a bit more memory efficient and lower resolution uh, some of the detail uh, just got lost a bit so i'm just redefining some of that again um so i guess as a note for myself and one of the things i learned was um use q remesher first before applying detail um then you apply detail after but it wasn't much of a set uh, of a setback anyways um so what i'm doing now is that i'm just bringing my color palette to my left side of my interface and uh bringing in a texture uh now this is aura my fiance and um she became my test subject for the for the uh, for the reference for the texturing now there's tons of good spotlight videos out there both on YouTube and I know digital tutors is a really good one um, I, I probably will not be making a a um, in-depth spotlight uh, video but I mean I'll just explain as much as I can here so basically I'm just bringing the picture using that as reference um, this time I will use my my uh, 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 symmetry at first and just really sampling different parts of the image and projecting them back onto my model there in real time this is for me where ZBrush just really just kicks ass it's it's so good um, so just moving around picking you know what part of the image I'm using where just first getting you know that the, most of the skin tones addressed sometimes they'll use a, a you know a part of the image that I don't really want to use but that's fine uh, it's normally not a problem for me um, just brushing that up covering as much of the white as possible but because I know this is for a still um, I'm not you know too anal about about how the textures are uh, are going to work out and for me it was really a test of the workflow like you know testing how Curie Mesher works within the production pipeline and finally being able to use Dynamesh to create a model from scratch without having to create like a polygon cage first and just bring it in for detailing um, it, it, it's pretty cool I think I'll be working like this uh, most times now with, with you know just Dynamesh to create a model and Curie Mesher to at least if it even if it doesn't create like a full production friendly animation it, it, it creates the basis for one then I can use extra tools like uh, like a topo gun or something to just maybe make exact uh, topology adjustments like around the eyes around the mouth for deformation when I'm animating but for for this particular thing because it's not being animated it, it it's even it, I mean it's way better and uh, it, it also helps out when I'm when I, when I create the UVs later as well, just having a nice animation friendly work, you know, topology, it also helps guide the UV master, I think. Okay, so once I've, I've done everything, um, I, I go to the unwrap. I just, I didn't, um, the, 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 you, you can use more unwrapping features in, uh, in UV master. I didn't in this case. You know the the it normally gets it right the first time and i'm saying this isn't for animation and what i do now is that i take all that poly paint information out because i've been using poly paint all this time and um you know just crank the model to its highest subdivision and create a texture from that and then crank it down to its lower subdivision and that's what i'm doing now where i'm creating the displacement and the normal and the normal uh map and then just running cinema 4d on the side pressing go z and having that uh, move to Cinema 4D. Giving it a second. Or go Z thinks. And there you there you have it. Okay, so um, I think the video will, will jump here because I'd created a separate uh, a separate clip. And I'm just saving this out and uh, one thing I'll note here is that I'm saving out as project with assets so that it saves 
um, everything because when uh, GoZ uh, uh, brings the model into Cinema 4D, it would have kept the textures in its program files. You want them to save out in a, you know a customized fold in a customized location so that um, whatever happens to ZBrush, my textures still work. You know that's the way that that's the best way of um, sort of um, arranging your project. So. What I'm doing right now is putting a placeholder for my eye. Um, normally, I'd have a, a model uh, of an eye. I, I have a, a couple of those that I, I, I have uh, in sort of like a library. But what this is, though, is uh, because I, uh, the eyeballs needed to be really flat, and, you know, like a seer. I didn't need any pupils on it. Um, that's why I kept it uh, as is. So what I'm doing right now is just customizing my Cinema 4D interface. I don't know why I do this all the time. I should really just save uh, my tabs and my layout like this. And basically, I'm saving my my picture viewer uh, tab alongside uh, my my uh, uh, viewport. And I'm just gonna start lighting, uh, figuring out the lighting here. Just you know, my uh, I'm just doing like a backlight for now. Like a really hot back backlight is probably going to be more than 100 um, percent, just so that I've got a good uh, rim. This is actually my rim light, not my backlight. Then I'll I'll add a backlight later as well. Um, right now I'm just setting up the new, well not new, not too new anymore, but the subsurface uh, shader in Cinema 4D. I haven't used too much of this, um, but I'm just figuring it out as I'm going as well. Just rendering that out just to see how that looks the subsurface uh, helps really just you know it, it helps bring the skin alive a bit um, I'm, I mean I used XSI before I started using Cinema 4D um, and I, I in my opinion I still think that you know the the fast skin or the SS skin that comes with mental ray is uh, way more flexible because it allows you to, to put in maps for epidermal uh, and subdermal skin, but I'm sure Maxon is on that. In a in a in a few releases from now, the you know the I'm sure they'll have us covered on that. I hope. Um, <laughs> so um, this is just another backlight. I'm making it cooler, like a blue color, and then this is my main key light. And I'm and I'm just using area lights in all of this, and, uh, rendering that out. It'll take it, it. It was taking a little while. It, on average it was about a minute something per render um, this video has been sped up about five times um, uh, I think the lighting here was the key light was a bit weak so you know I want to just increase that just push some of those parameters up a bit uh, I have the rain now the nice thing about having my 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 image uh, image viewer docked was that you know I could just bounce between um, uh, views so this was another a whole new session I'd gone into ZBrush and, and uh, done a mesh ex extract uh, for the clothing there and just sculpted the clothing real quick um, and then you know just quickly uh, got it back into cinema I go Z that again um, and you know I just tweaked my lighting a bit but essentially it was still the same thing where I had a rim light a backlight uh, and the key. Um, I didn't have a fill light in this particular uh, in this particular render, um, and I think I just slept on ambient occlusion to just help uh, generate a few a uh, little a little more shadow detail, like in the little uh, crevices there, and hopefully get it to work with the uh, normal map, which was creating the little bumps. Um, uh. So I hope that you guys have. Uh, learned quite a bit um all i did here was just put the image rent out a few passes from cinema 4d and put the image on a background in photoshop a little color tweaking um and yeah that was it so um it's important for you guys to give me feedback um if you really like this and just let me know uh what parts of this pipeline you'd like to see more of then i can make a separate tutorial for that Okay, uh, from me in Zimbabwe, aka Encore, the Alpha Geek, I will see you guys next time.